Brutal beat down, and he's got another one. AKM is back. Justice reigns for the night. Oh my, that was intense, wasn't it? Whoa. Welcome to another week of the Overwatch League, guys. Dylan Monte, Chris, we are special. Welcome to our Disney XD audience. We have a great set of matches today. It's going to be a ton of fun, isn't it? Yes, I'm very excited. We'll see, of course, in our first match here, how Paris Eternal are going to shape up against the Florida Mayhem. Yeah. Should be a bit interesting because Paris has been a bit up and down this stage. You know, it, it really has been kind of crazy to look at Paris because they beat Guangzhou so badly, then they lost their next series. And we'll see how they do today. Let's look at our overall standings to begin things, though. Obviously, if you look for Paris and Florida, they're on the right side. They're over there. Florida's way, way down. Paris, though, has a chance to gain some ground. They're still at a pretty awful uh, map rate right now, actual like win-loss ratio on maps, but they've got a decent overall match score. So. I think by the end of the stage, they can make some decent progress. Florida, on the other hand, looking for signs of life out of these guys. Yeah, but they're also making a lot of roster changes, which we'll get to in a minute. Eternal, of course, with three 3 losses, uh, or 4 losses, rather, uh, struggling in that map differential. But this, Florida Mayhem, of course, Tavik, Apply, and McGravy, they are currently going to be leaving the roster because right. the Florida Mayhem have decided to go with an all-Korean roster instead. And honestly, even though they haven't won, this might be the best we've seen from the Florida Mayhem. I agree. I mean, that's the thing. Is this team, even though it doesn't necessarily look like it sometimes, is on an upward trajectory, trajectory rather, overall, I think the issue is is that they're running into some tough opponents. They haven't been able to show it. They're also a team in flux, right? They're uh, leaving some people behind. They're going to have to swap things up. We still haven't seen Sia play really that much yet this season. So, you know, we know this team has more in them for sure. And one of the things that they need to do is tighten up the play overall. No one, I think, maybe needs a bit more tightening on the Florida Mayhem right now than this man on your screen here, Zephyr. It's been a little bit rough for, on the Diva for him. Yeah, I mean, we have seen Saya player a lot this stage at the very least, even though we didn't see him a lot at the start. Yeah. But like you're saying, the, the tank line is really what's holding back the Florida Mayhem right now. Of course, Zephyr just walking off the payload to end that Junkertown map. You don't want to do that. Now you can see, I mean, Philadelphia Fusion, they're pleasantly surprised as uh, they get, you know, a, a free fight win, basically, and just a conclusion of that map. So Zephyr and Swan, they're the ones who really need to step up. Yep, that's right. Well, let's get things underway, guys. Let's hear it for our first team in this series. It is the Paris Eternal. And Paris Eternal, I'm going to say it. I think these guys are better than their results have shown so far here in stage number two. If you go back and you look at their match against the Chengdu Hunters, I feel like we saw some really great play out of uh, players like Soon, Shadowburn. We know these guys have a lot of talent. I like Cloudy's Winston for the most part. But when you play against Chengdu, that team has a, a weird ability to sort of derail any plans you have. Pull your team's coordination apart. I think Paris is going to look a lot better today. I mean, I hope they will. I will say Should. that uh, part of their, their win up against the Guangzhou charge was having Shadowburn on the Brigitte and having a surprise factor when people did not expect him to be playing the role at the start of this stage. Sure. Uh, they did get a bunch of free control percent because of some interesting looks that are no longer going to fool their opponents. Now we know what to expect from Paris, and we'll see how well Florida's prepared. Speaking of Florida, let's hear it for other team in this series of Florida Mayhem. As we said before, a team in the flux, making some roster changes, kind of trying to find their footing as an organization here in season or in the 2019 season. Stage one was rough, stage two, a rough start, but there is talent in this roster. Yes, there is. And a lot of these players, I think, are going to be playing for their starting positions because Very I true. think we fully expect the Florida Mayhem with this new trajectory with the all Korean roster that they're looking to build, we assume they're going to be adding new players as well. They're not just going to stay with these six starters as they are right now, but until the, until they make signings, if they do intend to make them, it's going to be a while because, of course, it takes uh, time for the players to get visas and enter the United States if they are going to be signing foreign talent. So that means that these guys are going to have a real shot to demonstrate their abilities uh, in the coming weeks. Yeah. So great for the Paris Eternal on the other side of things, uh, you know, playing a little bit more recently for them. What kind of difference do you think he's going to make for this roster? 
this stage. I mean, I really think that Gray is an outstanding player. I'm actually surprised it took him this long to be introduced into the Overwatch League, given his performances on his national team of Portugal yeah. at the Overwatch World Cup. So it's a guy that I think has been a great flex support for a long time, playing a lot of Ana this stage, which has long been one of his strengths. He can also switch off to DPS heroes. Not really that common in this meta, but he was one of the original big European Sombra players uh, you know, back in the day. Well, it was really common back in the day, actually, for flex supports to be the ones to switch to the Sombra in a lot of compositions, if you look at a year or two ago. But yeah, great. Coming to us here in the Overwatch League, performed really well in the World Cup, now getting a chance to do it here on stage. And uh, you got to say, pretty decent stats so far. Yeah. Again, small sample size, obviously. We'll yeah. be check, taking we? a look at this guy as uh, as we see the stage progress. But right now, looking definitely strong, at least on the Ana. That's right. So let's take a look at our map set for the series, brought to you by Toyota. Let's see what these guys are going to duke it out on. Oh, look out. Oh, it's just on the screen. Oasis is going to be our first map, our control map. Hanamura following things up for Assault, then Blizzard World Hybrid, and then Gibraltar, our escort map. We might get to a fifth and final control map in this series. Who knows? It's possible. But uh, looking at this one, going into this one, I feel like Paris has the edge. Yeah, I think most people at the current juncture would say that Paris is going to be the favorite here in this series. And we'll start off on Oasis. And this is the same map we saw Paris play first against the Guangzhou Charge. It's where they surprised people by having Shadowburn come out on Gardens on the Brigitte. But since we are going to be starting on City Center, looks like we will get to see more of Shadowburn's Fara because we are on an big open map right here with those long sight lines. And Shadowburn has just been excellent on the Farah in the few matches we've yeah. seen from Paris Eternal this stage. Well, go back and watch this uh, particular round against Chengdu Hunters. They didn't exactly come out on top, but man, Shadowburn had some amazing individual p play on the Farah in that one. Very accurate, that's for sure. But we've known for a long time. I mean, this guy made his name as a, a great Genji, and then a little bit later, a great Farah. And great to see him back on that hero, who takes a lot of pressure, though. As the round begins, both teams waiting for the point to unlock. Big engagement oh, on the big board of damage. Man there. Yeah, Cloudy setting up a lot of possible kills, but nobody really claiming any for uh, Paris. Yeah, it's going to take a while for them to heal up their tanks, too, because they're not in range to get the Brigida healing activated. Vinzi, however, will actually demex Zephyr at the start of the engagement. All right. It is tough to play this 3-3 sometimes on this point when you have all that damage coming in, and that's why Cyplayer and Zephyr both down. Finally, the DPS for Florida Mayhem grinding out a couple kills for their team, and that should lead to uh, Paris getting some early control percent going, and as long as they can finish off BQB here. Yeah, they will eventually finish off the Brigitte on the point and start the cap process. Shadowburn already with a barrage right now. Yeah, no surprise there. Yeah, so tools to use in this next engagement. Florida Mayhem, they're playing with just that single damage dealer, Saya player on one of his signature heroes, the McCree, but because they took so much chip damage at the start from the pile driver on the Wrecking Ball and Shadowburn's rockets, they weren't able to strongly contest the point. Can you kind of question the Brigitte use by Florida here? Because who's she really going to be hitting to get that healing? Oh! Stunned! Saya <laughs> player was so ready for soon, man. That grenade, that could not have gone more wrong for the Tracer. Shadowburn trying to find a way to equalize, though. Again, he's got his barrage ready to go. Nanovisor. Yeah, meanwhile, Finzi pops the Soldier Ultimate. Chris down to Cloudy in the meantime. Paris Eternal trying to hold on to the point. Here comes Saya player. Slowly striding forward to the dead eye. Doesn't find any targets there. Let's get the flashbang onto Cloudy. Actually, I think that missed. Either way, Cloudy drops a minefield before he gets dropped by Zephyr. And it's looking like Florida might be able to solve this one back. But as I say it, Zephyr down via the rockets of Shadowburn. Side player misses another flashbang and he has to go running. So Florida looked like they had a chance there, but Paris was able to hold on. Yeah, they were. Soon's respawn, able to come back in time, and Paris had enough people on the point to make sure it didn't flip over to the Florida Mayhem's control. And now Paris here at 60%, looking like they might only need one or two more team fights in order to take this first point. A lot of credit to Gray on the Ana, too. When you have so many DPS heroes like Farah, Tracer, Soldier running around, it's it's hard to get those heals in sometimes, because you do actually have to, like, snipe your teammates with Ana to do the healing. So props in for doing that. Oh, props for the sleep dart on the oh. Swan as well. Takes the Swan dive down the middle of the map, but they can't quite complete the kill. Shadowburn still holding on to that barrage, though. He's got a chance to use it coming up. Gets a kill on BQB. Side player down as well. Paris Eternal looking like they really have firm control over this one. Swan pops a Primal Rage, but just can't really get anything done with it. Goodbye, Hogobun. 
There's a broad finally coming in, and it's kind of icing on the ultimate cake for Paris Eternals. It looks like they should cruise to a win here on City Center at least. Yeah, 100 to zero. It doesn't get much easier than that, does it? No, it doesn't. And 15 uh, limbs to just three on the floor to Mayhem. <laughs> it's actually 4 p.m. degree, sorry. <laughs> That's true. He yeah, doesn't know what time it is. Pacific time. <laughs> it's high noon somewhere. It is high noon somewhere in the world. That's yeah. true. Well, Shadowburn here, zero deaths, eight limbs, five final blows for this team. So certainly providing a lot of value on that Farah as we are accustomed to seeing him do as he's been playing this hero for years right now and has always been such an incredibly strong projectile damage player. Yeah. So much fun. See these DPS players finally starting to do some DPSing again. Getting to deal the damage. There you go. I mean, it is nice <laughs> to see you again. It sounds silly, but it's true. You know, if you watch, <laughs> if you watch stage one, you know how exciting that is actually. And if you watch uh, this point here, <laughs> University, well, you'll understand. we're going to get the 3-3 three, three yeah. once again. So three tanks, three supports out for both teams, trying to get that sustained healing and high health pools from the tanks just to stick to the point for a little bit longer. All right, a lot of aggression coming in from Florida right off the bat. They nearly dropped Shadowburn, couldn't quite complete the kill, though, but now Swan, low health. Not that Winston on the Mayhem side has to back off. Paris Eternal, though, biding their time as well. You really need to pick your battles, try to peel people off from their teammates to get kills when these cops clash. Cruz, meanwhile, taking a nap. Swan down, though, so Paris Eternal not losing their Lucio to the Sleep Dart and getting the kill on the Winston, and this fight rapidly going the way of the Paris Eternal. There wasn't anybody else to follow up on Swan's leap into the Paris Eternal, so he ends up just getting blasted by a high-energy Zarya, soon easily taking him out. Now, Florida Mayhem did manage to flip the point as the tanks from the Eternal were knocked into the, the lower level of the map. So they couldn't contest, but it's a really quick recapture there on the side of Paris. Right. I don't think Paris is too worried about losing 12%. No. Their opponents have already exceeded it anyway, and they've got a lot of ultimates now coming into this next fight. We'll see how aggressive Florida wants to be. They can bide some time. Ooh, Hago put down already. Gray finding the pick on that Zenyatta. That's a good start. Yeah, if you're Florida, you just back off. Take another fight later. Try not to lose anybody on the way. That's right. I mean, there's not much you can do if that Zenyatta alternate fire just domes somebody at the start of the fight and you lose Hogapin, who is approaching that nano boost. You'd really love to use that on Swan on the engage. So there it is. Ultimate for Paris, though. And all right, Swan just waiting things out. Sia player down already. Finzi with a kill here. Paris Eternal. Good job of not really over committing ultimates to these defenses. Florida has sort of slowly built up their own alls, but Paris hasn't really given up much of anything. No, and Florida hasn't even eliminated anybody yet on this point, Doa. We're now 23 to 3 overall in the map. It's 8 to 0 eliminations on this point. Yeah. So Florida has to do something with these ults because that nano boost got no value. Only half of the members of Paris have died at all. Here we go. Florida man. Pretty much a last did Zephyr did, he gotta go for it. There's the grab, Cloudy finally falling, Zephyr with the self-destruct. No kills out of that one, Gray pops the transcendence to try to keep people alive, and Florida Mayhem back on the point, maybe a chance to flip this one right now. Oh, all right, Sound Barrier, Paris re-engaging. There goes Saya player. The Sound Barrier for Florida wasn't enough to save him. Paris still having to be careful until their Winston comes back. As I say that, though, Finzi diving in to complete a couple kills, and it just looks like Florida can't get anything done. That was a fight that they probably should have won. I mean, they, they threw everything they had at it, and they're still That's not it. going to do anything. That's they the got map. one elimination on that point, wow. and it took a grab and a self-destruct to do it. Well, that was a beatdown. Paris Eternal winning Oasis 2-0. No problems there, and certainly a strong start to this series for them. I, see it, 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 I don't know, we'll like see it's gonna be a blowout, what Might can be you say? One, guys. <laughs> yeah, don't go anywhere, we'll be back with map two right after this. The Overwatch League is powered by Intel. Game, record, stream without compromise on Intel Core i7. And by Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League.
dive comp is essentially a competition with heroes that can get in and out very quick. Allows them to go in to backlines, get the kill, get out. Fast moving heroes essentially, yeah. So the dive comp consists of Winston, D.Va, two high mobility DPS heroes, and a flex support ranging from like Anna, Zen, or Mercy, and Lucio. People that suffer a lot from dive comps would be heroes that have no movement, such as Zenyasa, and also they're low health, so they're quite easy for Tracer, Genji, Winston to pick off. Welcome back to this series between the Paris Eternal and the Florida Mayhem Paris Eternal. Bringing the beat down in map number one, Florida Mayhem not having too much of a shot on Oasis. We'll see if they fare better on our next map in this series. It's going to be our assault map. I mean, it was rough. What, what can you say? Uh, hopefully, Florida Mayhem will be able to turn this around and make it into a closer series because Oasis uh, was very heavily dominated by the Paris Eternal. I believe there were four kills total yes. for uh, Florida in that last map. Yep. That is, that is rough. Yes, it was... Uh, it was two rounds of control. It was really rough. BQB going to be on the Torbjorn here, so they are going to be setting up a bunker composition. And what that means is using an Orisa barrier as well as the immobile Bastion in the turret form. A well, Pun on the uh, Batiste should help out with that as well. The Immortality Field does a good job of yep. helping that hard point live a little bit longer. And on a map like Hanamura Point A, there's a lot of little walls and things you can hide that behind to make it harder for your opponents to shoot it out of the air. Well, this is going to be a treat as well. We are going oh, to see nice. Shadow Burn on his signature hero, the Genji, something he doesn't get to play a lot these days. But yeah. when you get to see it, you really savor it. Oh, I will. This is the hero that made Shadow Burn famous years ago now. Finally getting to bring it back in the Overwatch League. We'll see what he's got with it soon on the Sombra, trying to go for a bit of a flank. So they're just poking. Being annoying on the roof there. Yeah, they're just poking in right now, trying to see uh, where the weaknesses are. That's a great play on a grenade, great grenade. Anti-healing down all over Florida, and immediately the hard point, not so hard oh. anymore. It is uh, fragile as can be, and that was a stop. Wow, what a beautiful setup from Gray. Gray threw that grenade from over the wall outside. He was positioned and managed to throw it into the sky. That they found crazy. the way, the proper arc and placement in order to hit that biotic grenade. So really nice stuff there from Gray. And that is an instant break onto the hard point. And look at this, the Florida Mayhem switching up their composition. Now they're back on the 3-3, but that means that they have no ultimate charge. And look at the Paris Eternal, Nano Boost is up. This could be an ultra fast Hanamura. My mind is blown, man. That is a incredible thing. If they've actually like figured out what the angle is, what the standing position is for Farah to, uh, or not Farah, for Anna to throw that grenade in there. I mean, it's on the Divas, it's on Zephyr to be ready to eat that one, but like, you can't, you don't expect that. You don't expect the grenade to come over the wall, right? Like, no, that's, I think that's the first time we've seen that, and that is the usual place that teams run the bunker composition, so we're gonna see more of it. That's right, here we go, Nano Boost used, Shadowburn comes in with the Nano Boost and oh, Dragon Blade, three kills already! Jeez. We're reaching peak Shadowburn! And that is Florida Mayhem getting slaughtered again. Gray falls in the process, but Paris, if they can handle just these few respawns... Oh, they got Shadowburn okay. and soon. Well, they were low health, and Swan just came in for the assassination, but it didn't matter. Paris Eternal with a blazing fast finish on Hanamura. Yeah, I mean, we saw Cloudy there with the Primal Rage uh, in the spawn door, and that's the reason why yeah. they were not able to get back to the point. He was just keeping them contained in spawn with the knockback. Yep, wow, what a pace set. For the uh, for the for Paris Eternal, let's see if Florida can equalize when they come back.
here we are again. And by again, I mean a situation where Paris Eternal basically crushed their opponents in Florida Mayhem in the last round of Overwatch we saw. Now Florida having a chance to attack themselves on Hanamura. But uh, it's, I don't know, what, what can you say? Like, uh, Monty, as our, as our analyst, I mean, give us some analysis. That was a beautiful attack from Paris. <laughs> uh, our, our stats guy, Captain Planet, told me that it was the third fastest Hanamura time ever in the Overwatch League. So it, it's go. about as fast as you can get it, not quite at the tippity top. So I, I am willing to give Florida a bit of a pass for that one. And the reason is because that particular attack throwing the grenade up over the wall. We're gonna see it right here. Why don't you break this down for us? I mean, just look at this positioning. So from Grace perspective right there, there's the grenade up and over the wall. And from this is downtown. the moment they were waiting for. And the thing about it is they don't have a, D a diva to eat that grenade because Zephyr is playing the Faro right now. So because they can get it behind the Orisa barrier from that angle, yeah. it just makes it so there's anti-healing on the side of the Florida Mayhem players. And you'll notice the Paris Eternal is playing further back for this exact reason. Yeah. They're not going to be tricked by their own play right now. There is not going to be a way to get that on a grenade behind the Orisa barrier because they are positioned further back on the high ground. Yeah, I think it's uh, definitely something to be aware of. If you like what you're seeing in the Paris Eternal, they're gonna play Dallas on Sunday here on Disney XD, so don't miss that. Should be a good time. Paris looking pretty good so far. Looks like it's gonna be the defense involving the Farah as well. So they are gonna try that hard point defense, but not from exactly the same point. They are a little bit farther back than Florida was. So hoping that uh, Hagopun doesn't quite have that same angle on the grenade. Doesn't look like he does as Florida Mayhem pushing in here. Immortality field used. Keep the members of Paris alive. Yeah, they have actually broken that Arisa barrier though. Soon, so low, and he's got that self oh, repair, and he still goes down to a rocket from Zephyr. Yeah, Zephyr finds that kill, and that's a go button for Florida Mayhem. They've got a real chance here. I mean, they're zoned out of the choke right now, but Swan's gonna try and break this defense. Yep, that's right. And I think he's got a pretty decent uh, chance of it as well. A lot of damage onto Paris Eternal. Snow still rolling around. Finzi gets D Mech here. It's kind of starting to fall apart. For Paris Eternal right now, Cloudy not going to last too much longer, and Paris Eternal looks like they're going to have to give up point A pretty quickly. Yeah, and look at all the ults online from the Florida Mayhem as well, so they should be feeling pretty good about going into this point B, especially with BQB having that EMP ready. Soon switched over to the Sombra, but because he died playing the Bastion, that means his ult is going to be a lot lower and used to get back to the point. Paris, we'll see if they stick with the the Sombra right now looks like they will. They will not be running a Zarya here, so relatively low damage from the Paris Eternal. And Shadowburn over on the Brigida now as well. The defensive far not so great on Hanamura B. Man, they've got a bit of a disadvantage in the L department. Uh, and a bit of a disadvantage in the tank department as Cloudy took a nap. That was a dangerous moment. Big EMP coming in from BQB. Four members of Paris Hack. And there comes a barrage on the wall. Look at the sleep dart comes in for Gray. That was clutch. They lost Shadowburn, but they've got a chance to defend now. And that was so critical because it means they can't go onto the point to use the Mercy ultimate. Right, that's time off the Valkyrie. That said, though, they still have five members alive right now. Only Hagopin down. Oh, another sleep dart onto Zephyr. That's two in a row. And Hagopin, Gray actually gets the kill. Holy cow, that's a bloodthirsty support action right there. That's what I like. Oh, I'm a stall side <laughs> player a little bit. <laughs> Gray just, you know. Shaking it like a, you know, I guess they don't have Polaroid pictures in the future, maybe? You don't, don't know whatever, that. Whatever the future, <laughs> maybe they do. But I feel like it would have evolved, evolved to the point where you don't need to shake it anymore. I mean, you don't need to shake it right now, Doa. Wow. It, shaking it doesn't do anything. The world changing right before our eyes, Monte Cristo. It's amazing, isn't it? Does it doesn't actually speed it up. Anyway, wow. fun fact about Polaroids. Wow, you are just full of knowledge. <laughs> That's what I'm told all the time, Doa. Well, on that note. Florida Mayhem trying to push in again. But now it's soon with the EMP. So the tables have turned a bit here. Well, they're trying to poke in so BQB can also get his EMP right now. Yeah. Uh, but they don't want to walk in to this junction of corridors because it does mean they are going to get all EMP'd yeah. in those hallways. So they're going to try and break it first. BQB already on the point right here. He got hacked, though. And oh, that, that means was... there is no way to teleport back. Well, Cloudy coming in with the Nano Boost. On the Reinhardt, swinging the hammer, doing the damage, Shadow Burn down. Paris Eternal just trying to hold on a little bit here, but Swan getting a bit low. There's the sun on the Cloudy, good combo. 
from Sire Player to help his team finish off the main tank on the other side. Now coalescence for Hagobin. Gray gets roasted right off the bat here, and Florida Mayhem in a great position to try and take this. That said, EMP comes in for Paris. There's a follow-up. Swan taken down with the self-destruct from Finzi. So a chance here with Paris, especially Beautiful on the EMP. back of that sound barrier. EMP as well coming in for soon. BQB, or BQB rather, using that one. Maybe Paris can slowly start to come back in this one, but that hack on the Cloudy is a problem. He's down again. That said, though, I mean, it's only five members of the Mayhem on the point, and the respawns yeah. are coming back so quickly. Not to mention, Gray switches to the Widowmaker and eliminates Zephyr and Hagapun. Gray is having a fantastic game so far. Just little by little, the Paris Eternal pushed Florida Mayhem back off the point. Florida Mayhem only needs one more tick of the control meter to take it, but they're already going to have a, a massively less time bank than uh, Paris will. Yeah, BQB switched over to the Zarya now, so will soon. Such Gray on the Widowmaker here. We talked about his ability to switch onto DPS players when he needs to. It's a good amount of damage before getting that headshot there. Yeah, just a desperation move, nice. but you know what? He gets the eliminations and hey. goes right back to Ana. Whatever works, self-destruct comes in. Meanwhile, from Zephyr, and he catches Gray on the Zenyatta. We cast a curse to man. Can't say something good about him, otherwise that happens. Florida Mayhem crushing this fight, and that should be about it for point B. You know how long Finzi is going to be able to hold out. Cloudy doing his best uh -oh. to buy more time anyway, but at this point, you're just trying to buy whatever you can, eat whatever you can off the time bank. That's all they get. Florida Mayhem will take point B. So after a very crushing uh, defense from the Florida Mayhem, they got absolutely destroyed. They actually come back with some life in them, able to complete the map and keep themselves in the running here on Hanamura. Florida dominant not out extra innings when we come back. Welcome back to Hanamura, where we are all tied up, points-wise at least. But if you look at the time bank, 5.53 for Paris Eternal, 2.39 for Florida Mayhem. So Florida got the job done on their attack, but they've got a lot less time to work with as we go into the extra rounds here. That's why they will be attacking first. The team with less time does that. And so Paris Eternal begins on defense. And they're going to go with the bunker composition yet again. It was broken pretty quickly by the Florida Mayhem, and they were using uh, the typical tools for Hanzo, long-range damage dealers, right. to uh, poke away at that Orisa barrier, and then set up for the Hanzo ultimate. That Dragon Strike shoots the big dragons through any obstacles so that you can move the Bastion off of that high ground. And that Hanzo is so dangerous, too. If that shield is down for a microsecond, that's going to be a lot of damage coming in. Yeah, the Storm Arrow just so good yep. at dealing with the, those barriers as well when you have that rapid fire available. And there's no fall off damage on Hanzo, so he can shoot from as far away as he wants and still do the same amount of damage. Pretty much just has to pull the bow back far enough. A Cruise Res is soon, who went down a little bit early. Swan comes in, goes for the smash. And they take down soon again. It's so hard to keep that Bastion alive sometimes. And that's kind of the linchpin for the defense. Paris Eternal struggling a little bit already. Pressure from Swan on the point right now. Getting low, though. Swan Cloudy very low. About 30 health. Can they do it? Can they keep alive? He gets his shields just at the last moment. Meanwhile, Zephyr with a couple of kills for himself. So Swan distracting long enough for his teammates to make up the difference. And Paris Eternal scrambling right now. It's just all about eating as many seconds as you can off the time bank at the moment. So that's about all they're going to get. And Florida Mayhem has had two very good attacks here on A. Yeah. Uh, they've been successful at breaking the bunker, killing the Bastion first twice in a row. Like you're saying, with such a small amount of time, they are going to have to snowball this into a fast win. Luckily for them, they do have a pretty nice ultimate advantage. Shadowburn now swap switching over to the Sombra. You also get another 30 seconds when you take a point on Assault in Time Bank 2, so they're up to, to a minute 30 again about for this one. Big ultimate advantage, though, but you're in that situation where you've got basically one fight to use as many ultimates as you can, and it's not going to be this one. Is Hagopan already down? 
Well, I mean, they came out and they played really aggressively. Look at where the Ant Matrix is. Paris is choosing oh, because yes. they know they have an old disadvantage to fight uh -huh. out of the boy. Gray, he's on your roof, he's behind you, yeah. and he's taking you out. That's right, get Swan as well. I mean, you heard me just say no before Zephyr used that barrage. It's like, I, that's not going to work, man. You can't get the kills that way. So they already good. lost your honor, but he went for it anyway. Swaps over to the D.Va, so part of the plan, I'm sure, but still. All right, so they switch soon to the McCree because they know BQP has an EMP up right now, so they're hoping that they can flashbang the Sombra before BQP has an opportunity to use that ability. BQB lurking on the flank right now. Yeah, pretty good position for the EMP, although he only really gets cloudy with that one. There's Eternal. That's people in the right place to avoid most of that. Shadowburn trying to keep him alive, but Swan comes in. Mario stop him to death. Saya player down, though. Both Brigitte's out of the way. That's Sword of Mayhem just tries to get whatever percentage they can here on point B, but it's going to be tough to get anything now. They've got 10 seconds left and a lot of low health members. Paris Eternal looks like they're not going to give Florida anything here on B. No, oh, they are not. They're going to finish without a tick. Self-destruct on the point, as it. no one's going to make it there. BQB can't get back with the Sombra in time. Pretty crucial, actually, for uh, Paris to put themselves in that position here. They gave up A, but now all they need to do to win is just get that single first tick on point B. Yeah, that said, though, they won on that first A attack because of that trick play with the Ana grenade. Very and now point. there's going to be uh, a switch in positioning, most likely, from the Florida Mayhem. They're not going to fall for it twice. They probably will be playing further back on the high ground. And we'll see if Paris Eternal has a different way to break through the bunker composition. Well, so here's where the IQ 9 million play comes in where like did he also figure out the point to throw the grenade when somebody moves back to i don't think that's possible but i could be wrong you're gonna have zephyr on the diva too and, and one thing he didn't do the first time was you know be aware that the grenade was coming in to eat that with the defense matrix but now you know on that diva again here on the defense as uh, we can see on our screens he might be a little bit more cognizant that that uh, biotic grenade might be coming in. Yeah, and also they're not running the bunker composition, it doesn't look like. That's they're going to be running 3-3. Three, three. So what this says to us is that Florida Mayhem is playing for a draw right now. They don't think they're going to be able to hold point A and get the win. So they're trying to play a worse composition on A to have an ultimate advantage where this composition is superior on B. They're also going to play aggressively right now to get some more ult charge. So Florida Mayhem. They, they are trying what they can to survive this massive time Whoa. bank and... Oh, Sleep Dart on the Cloudy. That was perfect, actually. Came right around the Gray's corner. In trouble. Gray's in a lot of trouble. Cloudy did not expect Hogglepin and the rest of Florida Mayhem to be in that room. And so that's a few seconds eaten off the clock already. And now, wholesale swaps coming over from the Paris Eternal. Crew's going to go ahead and get the res onto Gray. And now, they are going to be running the three damage dealers. Shadowburn onto the Farah and Finzi with the Soldier 76. They're gonna poke in right now, see if they can get some damage done early. Yeah. Sleep actually on to Soon. Uh, look at that nice uh, concussion grenade from Shadowburn to push people away from Soon. Didn't end up saving him, but it was a nice try anyway. Sleep dart on the Swan, but no kills followed up. Composition from Florida does struggle to do damage to this far out, unless the damage is coming in from the Ana. I mean, Hagapun is actually having a decent day for the Florida Mayhem. Okay. Yeah, the rest of the team, uh, has taken a little while to get rolling, but Hagapun, I think, has been pretty consistently good throughout this match, and he's hit some crucial sleep darts, including that part. Oh, he's nearly got the Nano Boost. He does have the Nano Boost now as well. First ultimate ready. He's going to go ahead and use the Nano Boost on the Swan right away. Getting aggressive on Finzi, on the rest of Paris Eternal. The Biotic Field is down to try to help them heal, but Swan's just going to knock people right out of it. Go back. Pretty good delay that uh, Florida's put together so far. I mean, but they had to use two ults for that, and it didn't delay very long. The Primal Rage is necessary to survive and get back from Swan, and they didn't get any eliminations when he went in with the Nano Boost, so... It's about the time, though. They got a minute off the clock already. Oh, but Swan getting launched almost back to his home base on the moon. Going down, that's going to be a big problem for Florida. Soon comes in with the EMP. Shadowburn still his ultimate ready, too. Gray overseeing his teammates. Give him the nano boost. There's a nano visor coming up for Finzi. That's a ton of damage. That cannot be avoided. You can't show your face around that soldier. And he's using the ultimate. Gets one. I think they would have liked a little bit more of that one. Nice stun from Saya player. Chasing him down. A nano boost on a BQB as he comes back to try to roast the remaining members of Paris Eternal. He's in a little bit of trouble here, but he's going to get away. But any way you slice it, Paris Eternal not going to be completing A on this attack. Don't even get the first tick even. 
Yeah, and they're really having trouble because they put all this long-range damage into the tanks, but it just gets healed up so quickly by Hagapun on this Ana. I mean, we're kind of seeing the original reason why the meta did gravitate more towards that 3-3 and away from DPS, because it really is hard to make the damage stick if you're playing with Parasys. And also, why we see Winston 3-3 so effective against three DPS compositions, because the Winston's repositioning allows you to isolate these low HP damage dealing targets very easily. Yep. That's right, that was more to mayhem. It's really taking the two Paris Eternal. So Paris, even after all this, still has three minutes in the time bank. They can swap if they want to. Like, they can switch to their own 3-3 and go for it, but you know, they've got a few ultimates, I suppose. They've got more coming online. They feel like they can do it. Maybe with Soon's EMP, they can. He's gonna use that EMP right away, and there's a kill on the PQB. That's the most crucial member of the 3-3 to eliminate. Sound Barrier comes out from Chris, but not soon enough. He does get the kill on the Shadow Burn, but now Finzi coming in with that tactical visor and the nano boost again. Sai player's shield burned through almost instantly. And after a little bit more healing, I think Paris is gonna get really aggressive on this point. Nice great sleep dart! Great sleep darts have been insane this map, by the way. Hago put down, there goes Chris. Paris Eternal all over point A now, and this should finally be the take. Yeah, uh, it was a good hold though from the Florida Mayhem. You look at the time they got off of the clock, it was nearly four minutes at the end, and that puts Paris Eternal in a rough situation where they have only uh, less, a little less than two and a half minutes when this caps to make it through and take that first tick on B. Part of the pressure that comes off a little bit in that situation, though, is that they only need that first third, that first tick yeah. of the control meter to win the map. Uh, they got that at least. They did do some swaps. Wow, soon getting a little bit tricky here, but... Uh, he was so greedy for that EMP. Yeah. And he got stunned by Saya player and ends up getting eliminated. So that's time that Paris Eternal really needs because with their switch of composition, they reset all their ultimates and they need some of these ultimates in order to power through the Mayhem because the Mayhem didn't have to switch comps, so they have a huge ultimate advantage right now. Oh, they're gonna need a great EMP if they're gonna make this work. There's the EMP from soon, hits a few people, side player and Chris down right away. So the kill's coming in, Gray the one taking heads in this situation. Paris Eternal, if they can win this fight, they will definitely win the map. Another good hack on Swan and he can't even get to the point. After all that, after a great point A defense, Florida Mayhem just kind of gives it up on B and Paris Eternal getting the 2-0 lead in this series. I mean, it was a tall order for Florida to be able to defend that. I think they at least showed a lot of like some strength in this match compared to the first map. It was good. Well, Florida Mayhem not down and out yet. They got a chance to try to bring it back after halftime. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more Overwatch League. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. Now connecting 99% of Overwatch League fans. Catch your league on America's network, T-Mobile. And by State Farm. Whatever life brings your way, State Farm is here to help life go right.
halfway through our first match of the day, and so far, the Eternal making pretty quick work of the Mayhem. They're up 2-0 after completing Hanamura with the final tick. Welcome back into the Blizzard Arena, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Puckett, I got Zoe, I got Brenton. They've recovered from hot sauce. Kind of. Kind of? Kind of. Yeah. yeah. Brenton was backstage like, I'm still numb. I can't feel we were, my hands. We were mildly worried that you know, we're not going to fare too well this halftime. If you guys missed it, check out our <laughs> Watchpoint VODs. Guys, it's an awesome show. But let's talk about this match we've seen so far. Paris going up against the Florida Mayhem. Florida looking for a big win today. And they almost got a draw on our second map. But let's go back to the first one. As we went to control, Shadowburn and Soon are both in the lineup for Paris. And Shadowburn continuing to impress on this map, always. It was everything I'd hoped for, you know, moving into stage two. Seeing a bit more Shadowburn playing his signature roles. And his fire might be one of the best in the league, honestly. He has unreal aim when it comes to landing a lot of these projectiles. A lot of his game sense as well. When to engage with the rest of his team. Using his ultimate abilities, you can see there. But the real... I think star so far of this match has been this guy right here. Greg. Zenyatta. Andy on him. Andy, everything he played, actually. He played he played but four different heroes, and, and it was actually insane. Gray popped <laughs> off like no other, and there was no way the Mayhem actually managed to shut him down. Now, we got to talk about the support from Paris, because if you watched Watchpoint, we're comparing Paris's win rates when running Lucio Soundberry that with one. Keep this versus is so Gray. That one. <laughs> All Look the numbers this. are going up, but this is what set up the initial attack. A long range super on a grenade. So it's gonna anti-heal everybody. And then you can see the rest of the team dive in and mop them up. He's he's been setting up play after play. After that, the nano was ready, gives it to Shadowburn, who cuts his way into point B, and that leaves over five and a half minutes on the clock for Paris for their second attack. He's just an absolutely unbelievable player. Like, look at this, the sleep dart now. Where are you going, Zephyr? The the ability for him Where? to just be a, just a handle himself reminds me of the Ryuji Hong of old, honestly. He, the way he you can just kind of leave him on the back lines, and he can flex. Look at this. This is an, uh, in one of the push attempts in Florida. He moves over to the Widowmaker. Close just out the round with two kills, but he's playing absolutely everything. He's so flexible, and it's honestly a miracle that Paris are only just utilizing. And you look back, <laughs> this was where we thought he we were going to potentially see a draw. Two minutes, 30 seconds left on the clock. The primal so Winston takes a nap. That's what opened the door for Paris on the final Yeah, it was, it was again Gray setting it up for his team. And honestly, I do think that Paris could have been even a little bit more dominant. It felt like once they once they got the sense of, oh, we're going we're gonna to get this. We, we have the victory in our back. They kind of started falling yeah. apart. Uh, the coordination didn't look too good. I think there were some communication issues coming out from their team. Because frankly, Mayhem did their homework they were they were very prepared they were really quick in breaking uh, down those bunker comps uh, Paris also that was the one thing we did uh, criticize in their game against the hunters but they fixed it like they now know how to play around it and they did well I will say I want to see this Florida Mayhem team stay on the point a little bit more in the second yeah, half speaking <laughs> of the second half guys let's not count out the Mayhem yet right they could still come back and tie this up for a game five looking at Blizzard World and Gibraltar though with our remaining maps. Bren, what's the secret to taking down Gray in this Paris Eternal squad that's rolling through him right now? I think you can abuse Soon Sombra. I think that's realistically what they need to be doing as well, because Soon didn't have a fantastic game when he was playing on the Sombra. Uh, and I think moving forward, if they do run Soon and Shadowburn in the lineup, you know he's going to be playing that role. He's not as comfortable in the D.Va. So you know they're going to be sort of pigeonholed into those compositions. That's one thing that they can exploit that they're not doing right now. So anyone you're looking at from the mayhem that might lead them to victory in the second half? Well, it kind of has to be BQB. And I think Paris also identified him as the main problem. It went as far as uh, switching soon onto the McCree, not to shut down Sefer on the Farah, since he already switched off of that on Hanamura, but to actually specifically take down BQB because he was the main issue getting into his backlines and getting great AMPs off. He looked really good on that Zarya on point A as well. Look for BQB to help rally this team. Can they do it in the second half? We'll find out after this. They don't just play for a team. They play for every fan, every rival, every moment, every match. And when everyone watching expects the best, they perform with the best.
Welcome back to the Overwatch League. Hey, look, whose cat is that? That's my cat. Oh, is it, what's your cat doing on the broadcast, man? I, I guess it's National Pet Day, Noah. Well, it is. What do you know? It's National Pet Day, guys. Look at that. Hashtag na oh, it's just me. It's my lizard. That's right. Did you actually expect me to have a normal pet? No. I have a reptile named Mango. He is a wonderful friend who would never betray me. There you go. Guangzhou charges a, a dog, too. What do you know? Well, there you go. How about that? Well, if you want a, a chance, maybe a slim chance, but a chance nonetheless of getting your pet perhaps featured on the Overwatch League broadcast, you can tweet at them with the hashtag OWL2019Pets. Who knows? Maybe you too can see your furry or scaly friend, <laughs> or feathered friend, or fishy friend, also a scaly friend also in scaly. a way, I suppose, on the broadcast. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Happy National Pet Day. What did you Thank get your? What did you get your cat? Nothing. Oh. Wow. She doesn't know it's National Pet Day. It's <laughs> That's harsh. I got my pet a, a nutritious mixture of fruit and insect protein. <laughs> That's nice of you. I think you do that frequently, however. So that's, that's was true. it really special today? <laughs> yeah, you're right. You know, maybe I'll grab some crickets on the way home or something. Do you, you know? feed mango mangoes? Yeah, she, uh, he could eat mango, actually. Yeah, <laughs> they eat fruit in the wild. It's true. So it's possible. Is that cannibalism? Well, no, because it's the same name, <laughs> different things. Oh, OK. That's, that's how it works. works. Yeah, right. <laughs> Kanye, subbing in for the Paris Eternal. Oh, yeah, there's Overwatch. <laughs> Blizzard World is going to be our next map. It's going to be our hybrid map between these two teams. To be fair, not a lot to talk about in-game uh, yet in this series. Unfortunately for the Florida Mayhem, they are down 0-2. Paris Eternal on the attack now, and it will be another DPS-heavy one, although maybe some switches here. Yeah, Danya coming ah, yes. in. Obviously, you see him playing a couple of Shadowburn signature heroes, but also a very capable Widowmaker player, so that's the reason why we are going to see him on this map, because Point B does contain some ideal Widowmaker terrain with long sight lines. Absolutely. Lots of chance to snipe. Florida Mayhem, they are going back to that bunker composition. However, this time it's going to be Zephyr on the Tor Bjorn instead. Saya player oh. off. He's been relieved of Bastion duties and put on the Widow. Oh. Zephyr, meanwhile, is trying to stay alive on the Tor Bjorn. Turret out of the way, though. He did get the kill on the crane. Nice shot on Definzi to finish him off. Looks like Florida will hold for now. Yeah, they will, but the respawn timers are going to be critical right now soon. Still lurking around the back. Zephyr trying to find him. Chris going to get the resurrection onto Saya player, bringing him back into the fight. You can see soon still skirting the edges of the engagement while the rest of the Paris Eternal are going to group up. All six players are alive and in defensive position right now for the mayhem. Side yep. player finds a little bit of a shot, uses the ultimate to try to show everybody where the enemies are. Danya down already. Zephyr managing to pick him out of the air with his turret. Zephyr's turret down in revenge. Meanwhile, Claudia has to back away. Doesn't have a lot of health remaining. Tinsy's about to get DMAC too, so nobody's been able to really dislodge BQB yet. And Torbjorn, take a nap, man. You've earned it. A little bit of rest there. Soon still behind enemy lines. Does not have the EMP quite yet. Should be getting it quickly, however. EMP combined with the blade from Danye could be quite impactful here in this engagement. But Paris Eternal, they have been struggling on their last couple of attacks. Yeah, they really have. It is interesting to see uh, them take Shadowburn out and have Danya in on Genji. Shadowburn's on Genji. There's a nice EMP on the BQB. Very finally nice. soon. Looking for that ultimate he needs. Finally gets it. Tanya comes in with the cleanup. 3K with that Dragon Blade. Tries to make it for him, but Cloudy denies. Take that turret. <laughs> a taste of your own bullet medicine. <laughs> now using the Reflect right onto the turret. Quickly takes it out. So Paris Eternal ch comboing the EMP with the Dragon Blade. Leads up a lot of eliminations right here. Here's right. Danye's perspective as they jump in. This is a Genji's that paradise, right? Pulls out the blade. Genji paradise, that's right. Just Ooh, in a corridor, dashing through. Wow. Zephyr. Nearly died there, too. Wow, soon actually going to get eliminated. He's been having a little bit of trouble infiltrating the back line in this series, hasn't he? He's gotten back there a couple times and has uh, gotten picked off a couple times, too. Yeah, Paris Eternal also continuing to run the three DPS composition into Florida Mayhem's Winston 3-3, which it didn't work great for them on their second attack on Hanamura, but they are committed to this. Now they're going to switch it up. Okay. So it's definitely the right time to do it. Yeah, on this map, uh, on point B, but especially on point C, you really do need that 3-3 for the most part yet. 
the meta. There's an Ana boost on the Swan. Gonna try to just burn his way through the Paris Eternal team. They've already lost Cruz right off the bat as he leapt in. And yeah, that's gonna be Florida Mayhem holding the door. Not letting Paris get anywhere near the cart yet. Wow, they're chasing them all the way back to the original spawn, too. Remember, the spawn room has actually moved. It's not past that choke point anymore. It is right next to the payload, but they're going to push it as far as they can. And Florida Mayhem coming online after a lackluster first map in this series. They are slowly doing better and better, it seems like, each push against the Eternal. A little sleep dart onto Danya as well. Had to delay that push a little bit more to wait for him to wake up. Florida Mayhem, now they've got the... Graviton Surge, BQB uses it, just throws it in there. Follow up, come in too. It looks like they're not even gonna need any more ultimate to clean that up. Yeah, there goes everybody basically on Paris. Yeah, great Biotic Grenade getting thrown in there as well to prevent the Paris Eternal from healing. And because they switched this composition, they have been very far behind in terms of ultimates. Yeah. And Florida Mayhem, they're looking efficient right now. They only had to use the Graviton Surge to get all of those eliminations, and now only two minutes to make it through a very long point. There's basically been no payload movement. And then you've got the arguably even more difficult point C to contend with even if you make it through B. Florida put themselves in a great spot right now soon. Has that Primal Rage gonna get to the back lines and use it, trying to juggle the supports away from the rest of their tanks. Setting up the kill on the Cloudy, that was perfectly executed by Soon, or by Swan rather. Gonna get the kill on Soon. Florida Mayhem just having no trouble at all handling Paris on this map so far. Yeah, Hagapun hitting a lot of these grenades and sleep darts has been the catalyst for Florida Mayhem's stout defense here. It's definitely been a battle of the Anas I, in this I, series, hasn't it? I really can't remember if we've ever seen a point B hold. I mean, the payload has gone all the way back to where it emerged from the doors. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen this before I've for never, this long. I don't think we've ever seen a hold like right at the yes, very beginning. It's very we've, weird. We've seen some early ones, but usually you at least get into the uh, StarCraft area. Yeah. You at least get the payload past the choke. Yeah, no kidding. Just like me, trapped in the world of Warcraft. No matter what game I want to play. <laughs> Here we go, Swan. Again, they're starting to find the damage. This time, Saiya player goes down. Paris Eternal countering with that sound barrier, put themselves in a position to turn this fight around. And that time, they saw Florida Mayhem coming. Swan wasn't able to separate people like he wanted to. And that's going to be finally the payload getting some distance. I mean, your work is done, though, if you're the Florida Mayhem, right? You force them to use the sound barrier. They don't have a transcendence right now as they're coming out, and you have a Graviton Surge. So you can come in and absolutely clean up the Paris Eternal, who only have 30 seconds left to push this payload. Yep. Yeah, it still seems really unlikely that they're going to be able to even finish B. They'll have to have, like, a Herculean push. It's going to happen in overtime, even if they're not stopped at all on B. Yeah, Paris needs to play aggressively right now. They can't oh, yeah. let Florida Mayhem get a good Graviton off first. Florida Mayhem has stopped the payload, Paris. They need to make something happen. You gotta keep winning fights hard. Florida has taken a lot of ship damage. In the last couple seconds here. We're in overtime already, as we knew we would be. Cloudy went for the shatter. Doesn't look like he really got anybody with that, though. All right, here we go soon. In the grab. Now the self-destruct for Zephyr. No kills on that one. Meanwhile, Florida Mayhem drops the sound barrier. They are still looking okay for the moment. You got to stay in the payload if you're Paris Eternals. Well, they do pop Zephyr on the Florida side out of the mech, so maybe a chance here as it's just that mini diva. But Florida pushing Paris back. They counter with their own sound barrier now. Paris moving forward. Nice charge on the Saya player here. Chris just trying to boot people away from the payload as much as he can. The overtime bar expires so fast right now, but it looks like Paris Eternal is going to win the fight. I mean, they are because Florida Mayhem, they were just poking. They were thinking that they it? had to actually wow. just play back and wait for ultimates. But what ends up happening is they lose the poke battle. Their tanks get very low in HP. And then they have to engage with the Graviton Surge when BQB has almost no health remaining, so they can't get follow-up damage. I mean, Florida just needed to play aggressively. Instead, they just let Paris Eternal push basically for free throughout point B. Right, this map is wide open now. It was really looking good for Florida for a little while, but... Yeah, now we'll see how far Paris can push it. That's a big shadow, though, coming in, but a nice transcendence from Gray to try to keep people up, but it's not working, though. The healing, not enough. And Florida Mayhem will win the first fight on C anyway. Only about a minute remaining now for Paris. Uh, not a lot of time, even though they did get a little bit more into that time bank by completing that last point. Sign Florida Mayhem going to be playing around the terrain, trying to use that corner for cover. Yep, that's the idea. 
Got a grab you can use if you need to, but Paris wants to get more distance if they can. Grab used by Florida here. Soon all charged up. They cannot afford to lose it. They lose Cruzo. There's a grab now. Agobud, Transcendence. Might end just in time. No, they got Swan and BQB. Paris can still keep pushing this here. Chris falls as well, and Florida again. Losing a last minute fight. 10 seconds for Paris left, but the payload is moving. And Paris has almost no tools available to them. They need Gray to get this transcendence up quickly. Well, they need Cloudy to have a massive burst shatter as well. Needs to land a big one. That payload still needs to move all the way up and around the corner here. All right, the rally comes in. There's the self-destruct. No kills out of that one. Swan getting really low. Sound barrier saves him. Gray there with the transcendence on the Paris side. Cloudy didn't get enough out of that shatter to push the fight in their favor. There's Swan with the shatter. That one gets blocked by Cloudy. And now they're moving back in. Swan down. He pushed that so far forward. They couldn't keep him healed. BQB as well. The Zarya damage out of commission. And Paris Eternal. Are you kidding me? Are they actually going to complete this push? They've got a few more respawns to deal with, but this would be an insane completion. If they get a ton and they will in overtime. Wow, what do you say about that? I mean, that's a that's a complete failure on the side of the Florida Mayhem. As clutch as that was for the Paris Eternal, and credit to them for, for pushing out that map, there were a lot of opportunities for the Mayhem to slow them up, and they gave so much ground instead. It's got to hurt, but Mayhem have a chance to equalize things on their attack round right after this. Paris Eternal in overtime actually completed their attack. That was that was crazy. I can't believe that uh, Florida Mayhem were actually letting that happen. That's the thing is that you and I were talking about this during the break, and Florida Mayhem just kind of didn't attack. So don't forget, guys, you can get your All-Star tickets right now. It's going to happen after Stage 2. Between Stage 2 and Stage 3 should be a good time. I'm looking forward to it. Always fun. Yeah. See who gets voted into the All-Stars, and you do have variety of fun and silly modes planned, I believe, so should be should be quite a rousing time, Doa. Ah, uh, yes. Should be indeed. A flight to Duskwood. It looks you know, like a looks like a pretty lame ride. I don't know, man. It's a, it's a pretty <laughs> wild ride if you're a low-level character, and wow, that is a scary zone the first time you go there. You know, pretty much just after uh, Westfall, you know, right after you go through Elwyn Forest. You know all these places well, right? Yeah, of course. Of course yeah. I do do it. I thought so. All right, Florida Mayhem on the attack. It was a tough round last time, but you got to, this is a time you got to put that mental fortitude into play here and not let it affect you. Try to get a win here. You're not out of this series yet. You can still try to reverse sweep. It's going to be tough. Paris yeah. Eternals had their number all night. Yeah, three DPS composition once again from the Paris Eternals. So they're using those far rockets just to spam some of these doorways and chip away the Florida Mayhem on their approach. Yeah. Sleep Dart actually on to Soon right now. It's another good one from Hagapun. They got to keep him alive too. Hagapun down to Soon down as well. So 
Both teams losing somebody, but Sia player extremely low himself. Trying to find that kill. Cloudy down though as he tried to look for it. Sia player finally taken out. But the respawns will come in for Florida pretty quickly here. Yeah, and here's the thing. They don't have any tank right now on the point. It's just no. a Mercy and an Ana and two DPS heroes. So they're gonna have to use that Dragon Strike onto the point right now just to clear people off and prevent Florida Mayhem from getting any more ticks. That was a, a true zoning ultimate. Zephyr resets to rejoin his team here. But yeah, you're right. I mean, that's one of the things with these three DPS compositions is that if you lose your tank, you don't really have a, a good way to sort of stand your ground on the point and you end up having to use ultimates like we saw Finzi do in kind of less opportune ways. Yeah, absolutely. And Danya kind of getting close to that barrage right there. Nano boost onto SWAT, but he's hacked. Yeah, knocked back as well. Still does enough damage to finish off soon. I assume he's kind of that one, man. Yeah, what do you do? Sia player. Get that one. Now Swan low. Ooh, they gotta keep alive. He doesn't have his ultimate yet. They get the heal in the end anyway. Danya, meanwhile, gets a nano boost. Trying to get the damage. Nice! Stun on him. Gets taken out. But, uh, BQB's EMP actually set that one up. Maybe a chance now, but they do lose Hagopa in that uh, minefield. For Cloudy, delaying a little bit. Delaying long enough for Paris to come back in with their own EMP. And it looks like that might deliver the point right back into their hands. Lord of Mayhem with two ticks. But it looks like that's where it's going to end for this push. Maybe with the respawns, they can grind it out. They're trying anyway. I, they got to get on the point. Cruz is trying to use his blaster right now. Has to Cloudy. eventually heal up Cloudy, who rolls to safety. Respawns coming in, but it's going to be a lot faster for the Mayhem, and they should be able to finish here on A. Well, that's the thing. Yeah, you're going to get your people that have died in the fight back to the point a lot quicker on Blizzard World Point A. Another zoning ultimate coming in. Dragon Strike is trying to buy time, and they have bought a good amount of time actually, but it will be Florida Mayhem eventually finishing off point A here. And they bought like another 45 seconds or a minute off of that delay. Yeah. And considering that Florida does have to make it through the entire map, that's a lot of time that they don't have to worry about any longer. BQB now looking for an opportunity to use this EMP. Kind of waiting for the members of Paris to group up a little bit. Unless he finds a juicy target like Cloudy. I'm out gets found there. Wants to translocate to safety again. Payload is moving. Paris doesn't look like they want to defend it as aggressively as Florida did. You really can't with this cop. Minefield coming out. There's the EMP for BQB to try to counter it, though they will get the kill onto Cloudy. And Florida Mayhem, not a bad start there. No, and they keep the payload moving. That's yeah. all you have to do right now. EMP gets value because you get the elimination, you force the reset. Now you're gonna try and get a stagger kill. Not quite lucky enough to do that as Finzi sprints away from Swan. I'm ready to unleash my primal rage. Whoa, Swan is ready to unleash his primal rage. Did you hear that? Yeah, he's telling everybody. Very well, soon unleashing the rage on the Hagopun there. Florida Mayhem having to fight this 5v6 if they go for it. Now Zephyr getting demeked as well. Finzi just can't be pushed off this high ground at the moment. Yeah, they're not going to use any ultimates. Florida Mayhem in retreat right now. They yep. know they're already on the back foot. Soon now with an EMP. Florida Mayhem has a lot of ults to work with, however. Keep in mind, they don't have the Zarya, so no Graviton Surge to couple with the self-destruct. Yeah, you can see Finzi just looking for that Sombra. Yep, that's what he's doing. He's not just randomly firing. He is randomly firing with a purpose. Exactly. Purposefully randomly firing. Got that EMP though. That's the thing, is that you can have all the ultimates in the world, but if your whole team gets EMP'd, you're probably gonna lose Sleep that fight soon. <laughs> hey, that's the one way to push the payload. Dante just goes and uses a barrage, can't get any kills out of that. There's soon with the EMP. And do they get the follow-up? Danye has a nano boost. BQB in a lot of trouble. Direct hit on the him from Danye. Florida Mayhem again, a little bit short-handed. And this push, Swan so low, can they keep alive? They get the heals just in time here, but they do have to give up a little bit of ground to Paris. There's a Nana Boost now on the Swan, but he's sleeping again. Meanwhile, Danye taking a nap of a different kind on the payload. The sleep darts have just been all over in this series. Cruz, oh, he lives. Now Swan, can he stay alive? Barely. A lot of close calls going on in these last few fights, but that payload has been inching forward. Yeah, and Swan, uh, soon rather, is coming back into the fight right now. Will be full six members for Paris, but not as Gray and Finzi are finished. So this should be a completion of B. Yeah, big EMP by BQB at the end of that fight, and that should deliver them the point in the end. So they get it done. They have a little bit more time going into point C than Paris did. 
So Florida Mayhem looking okay so far. Yeah, plenty of time to get this all the way to C, especially since Paris Eternal. They decide to switch their composition, except for most likely Gray on the Ana. Florida Mayhem, they're gonna be coming up on a Primal Rage right here. There is a Chasm in the middle of this point, so an opportunity for Spawn to potentially get some environmental kills. I was gonna be excited to have uh, Soon stay on that McCree, but he swapped over the Zarya. Yeah. Probably a better choice, but you know, the McCree, I mean, it, the way Swan has been diving in, that last thing might make the difference here. Going to a more stable composition, though. There's the Nana Boost used on the Cloudy. Goes airborne, comes down with that extra damage hammer, but gets bounced around so much, he doesn't really get to put it to much use. They do have the payload back under their control, though. Yeah, did shave some valuable time off the clock, however. And they're also getting up some other ultimates. As you can see, Sud and BQB both swapping over to the Zarya, so they are about the same ultimate percentage as it stands. One minute. Now for the Florida Mayhem to try to complete this push. Gray has made the swap from the Ana over to the Zenyatta. Now Zephyr engaging with the self-destruct. No kills out of that one. The shield up in time for Cloudy. That payload does get stalled out a little bit anyway. BQB down. Again, that's a big one. If you lose your Zarya first in these 3-3 versus 3-3 fights, your team's just not going to have enough damage. You have to back off. Yeah, and there's also now a window of time where Soon is going to have grab, but the Florida Mayhem will not yet have a Graviton Surge. So if they can fire it off quickly, opportunity to force that transcendence early and maybe get some good value out of it. Possibly. There's Eternal. This is the fight that could determine the map right now for both teams. There's a rally used on the Paris side. Florida Mayhem just trying to wait it out a little bit, but they don't have a lot of time to wait. You gotta push on, you gotta be aggressive. That was their problem at the end of the last round. And they're trying to poke to get their ults online. We'll see if it does them any favors. There are no support ults for the Eternal right now, so the grab could be huge from CQB. Soon cannot get his grab eaten. That is a real thing right now. Zephyr's gonna be looking for it, no doubt. All right. Grab goes in, doesn't get eaten. Craig gets to kill the BQB right in the way. There's the self-destruct. Now the transfer pairs to try to keep people up. All right, sound barrier from Florida Mayhem as they strike back, pushing forward into overtime. Now the later sound barrier for Paris Eternal. They're gonna have the health advantage as they push forward. Swan in big trouble, goes down. Eventually the support yard ult usage from Paris just a bit better as they get the upper hand in this fight. They're fighting the 65. Now the Doomfist comes out for BQB, but can't get any of those picks he was looking for. Overtime expiring, and it looks like Paris might be able to end the map right here. They will, and Paris Eternal will win the series with that map win. Still one more map to go, but they've got the 3-0 so far. A Gray with another big play gets that right-click headshot to take out BQB in without that Saria. Nothing that the Florida Mayhem can do down a player, down a lot of damage, and that means a win for the Eternal. That's right, Florida Mayhem looking a bit better on their attacks, but Paris coming out on top again. Map four, up next. The Overwatch League is powered by Intel. Game, record, stream without compromise on Intel Core i7. And by Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League.
check it out. Oh, that cat is sleeping through our casting. <laughs> oh, well, don't read into that too much, guys. I'm sure it's a fine cat otherwise. And hey, that's what I like to see, more reptiles on the broadcast. That's right, that's Turtles your spirit cool. animal right there, Doa. Turtle power, that's right. <laughs> and uh, yeah, a little hamster, that's nice. We have our own uh, hamster in the Overwatch League as well. That's right. An Overwatch the game, rather. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, well he's a, mostly with just one team. I mean, he, he really is the embodiment of Eamon, let's be real. That is true, yeah. Well, at this point in the series, Paris Eternal has won it. They've won three maps in a row. It's not over yet. We still have that fourth map to play, a chance for Florida to at least make up a little bit of map differential. But it's it's been tough, even Florida at their best. I do feel like there have been good plays from Florida here and there. Yeah. Uh, just Paris has always been considerably better. Yeah, I think, I think Florida has played better every map that we've seen them play so far. Sure. Uh, they're making it close on some of these pushes. I do think they had every opportunity to win Blizzard World. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. But you know, they, they broke down in that defense, unfortunately, that was going so very well for them at the start. It's not something that you enjoy seeing, but maybe they can uh, lessen the damage a little bit as we head into this fourth map. But this map is especially important for Paris, because remember, they were negative eight in map differential coming yeah. into today. So they need some of these four rows, because if they want to start thinking about stage playoffs, season playoffs, that map to differential may be the thing that separates them from another team and those opportunities. Yeah, they're able to win this one 4-0. They're able to take another couple series with a, a really great map differential as well. They're kind of right back in the running for like set stage playoffs and then later on for uh, playoffs down the road too. So what a great opportunity for them to kind of like reset things because being at negative eight is a, yeah. a rough place to be no matter what your match record is. That's yeah, sure. and it, it's really hard for them too because they have five losses, but three of those yeah. fives have been them getting 4-0 blanks. Yeah. So, and let's take a look at Gray versus Hogapin right now. I think both of these players are actually having outstanding series. Uh, Hogapin, I think, has been the brightest spot on a Florida Mayhem team that is struggling so far in this stage. And Gray is really starting to show up, especially on the Ana. Yeah, when, what you're not seeing on there is the sleep darts, and that has been kind of one of the crucial things with both of these Anas yeah. in the series, especially with Gray, man. He has landed so many great sleep darts, and frankly, it's been dangerous to be a Winston on either side in this match because uh, they've been getting uh, hit a lot. Yeah. And, you know, Hagepin's a player who was on the London Spitfire last season right. and is now on the floor to Mayhem. But, um, you know, he was a strong player on London as well. So yeah, certainly, sure. I think, a player to keep your eye on on this sort of new look developing floor to Mayhem roster. Right, as you saw on your screen, Shadowburn subbing back in for Danya as we go forward to our escort map is going to be Gibraltar. But just to touch on what you said, I agree. You know, when we were coming into the season, we looked at Florida Mayhem's roster. We saw some of the changes they had made, saw players like Hagopin coming in, and you're like, you know what? This team is actually starting to put together a pretty solid roster. And that made uh, stage one a, a little bit surprising in that uh, we didn't think they'd be like a top five team per se. But you expected them to do a little bit better than they did then. And it is still a little bit of a, a little bit of an odd circumstance that they're struggling as much as they are. Yeah, and as we evaluate them as well, Saya player has also quietly had a pretty good match on Brigitte. Yeah. He's managed to stun soon, find the Sombra, get some very important pickoff kills that have really slowed up the Paris Eternal. And considering he's a player who is known for his long-range hitscan heroes, his Widowmaker especially, and his McCree, uh, he's showing some really good positioning and widow uh, er, and uh, decision making on the Brigitte as well. So you do like to see these developments, I think, if you are a Mayhem fan. Very true. Paris Eternal trying to take the high ground away from Florida Mayhem right off the bat. Going up to that bridge as Finzi pushes the cart to get things started here on our escort map to Gibraltar. Just put the payload, push the payload. Yep, so just a D.Va underneath right now. Uh, no other members of the Paris Eternal going to be near that payload, but they have to send somebody to deal with Vinzi. D.Va fight off the card. <laughs> That's right. The uh, honorable single D.Va combat, though, not allowed by the rest of Florida Mayhem. It is the sacred right of each D.Va to stand in front of each other and just hold down left click until one is dead. <laughs> no rockets allowed. No defense matrix allowed either. That's right. You can use melee, but that's it. <laughs> Honorable Highlander-style combat. DQB has to flee, though. As he nearly goes down. Gray finds the pick on the Hagopun. Once again, winning out in that flex support matchup between these two teams. There goes Swan as well. The dominoes starting to fall for Florida Mayhem. That's going to mean a quick point A take for Paris Eternal. This kind of reminds me of point B on Blizzard World, where Florida Mayhem never really got any semblance of a defensive fight going. 
Yeah, I mean, they did very briefly right there, but it was shut down by Graves' pickup, right? Hagepin, sure. and now he's just gonna get split spawn, can't Ugh. do much against Cloudy. So we're gonna see the supports here from the Paris Eternal drive that payload home, Cruz. It's Cloudy with a chance of primal rage. And he is very angry as it turned out. The split spawn's absolutely brutal right now. Oh, yeah, some of those players still getting the old spawn even after, uh, because they died a little bit too soon in the fight. So when the point was taken, they were still a little bit too far forward. That's rough. Yeah, now you have to fight to retake. Fortunately for Florida, they do have all of their ultimates available. And Paris Eternal, they had to use a couple. They had to use the Trance, they had to use the Primal Rage. They end up getting a lot with it in terms of payload progress, but Florida has a chance to stabilize right now. Grab use right as Florida Mayhem walks through. They're going to pop the sound barrier, but it doesn't save Sia Player. No kills from the self-destructive Finzi. But Florida Mayhem still in a bit of trouble. They've got so many ultimates. Whoa! Primal Rage indeed, Swan. Finds a lot of members of Paris there. Yeah, that is not how the Eternal expected that fight to go. Yeah, Swan, when he's in Primal Rage and is Dano boosted, and there's a Graviton Surge because he's not actually knocking people back. He can do a lot of damage in that case. So that's exactly what he's going to do in that confined area, Finzi. It's like me, I, I wake up and I just start wildly firing a gun. <laughs> I see, it's not off. I wouldn't want to be your neighbor, Dara. <laughs> Well, don't wake. Don't hit me with a sleep dart, then. Uh, well, I told you, just, you this before. You just said when you wake up, so I just assumed it happened every day. No, you thought I meant... No, no. <laughs> I would do that, man. Sleep dart, obviously. <laughs> now I'm going to have to try it with a sleep dart, though. You piqued my interest. <laughs> if I suddenly go unconscious on the broadcast, you know who to blame. So it just turns into Yosemite Sam. You hit him with a sleep dart. <laughs> Does anyone out there know who Yosemite Sam is anymore, Monty? Come on. We're dating ourselves. <laughs> like, I know who he is, of course. But... And I'm sure our audience does, too, because they're all intelligent, fine, knowledgeable people. Sound barriers. Paris Eternal tries to push forward here on this one for the mayhem. The outside looking into this fight, they finally get back on the payload again. There goes Cruz. And for the mayhem. Can't lose Sia player there, and Cloudy has to turn away at the last moment. Grab use, Paris going for this, despite being short-handed. Self-destructs coming in, no kills out of that one, but Paris Eternal. He can this nano boost, Although they do, yeah, give BQB that nano boost, man. And that might be enough damage to push this one back again, and looks like it will be for now. BQB down in the end eventually, Finzi. Managed to get him, but uh, that's going to be the payload stopped right there. Now, it took a lot for the Florida Mayhem to hold on that push because Swan died with his Primal Rage still up. He gets back and doesn't end up having to use it in the following fight, so they will have a tool. Paris Eternal! Uh, it's going to be really hard for them to keep pushing. The payload's right at the end. They have a long way to walk across open ground. They have to come through these choke points into B. And... We're gonna see Swan, he's gonna primal them from behind, potentially. Ooh, that was a really nice split from nice. Swan. That's and a that great was, set play right there. Yeah, good body block on the doorway. That, uh, that was about as smooth as it gets for Florida Mayhem. Now that, that is what I'm talking about, right there. Florida Mayhem has it in them to put together these really good plays. That was a good example of it, but you just don't see it a lot. Yeah, you don't see it consistently enough. All right, Florida Mayhem now coming in with a lot of ultimates. They, they're working their way up to six right now. Paris has had to do a couple of what we call economy pushes just to get their ultimate online. And they're getting closer to having a few more available. Got a couple of them, at least enough to try to push the payload a bit more. Swan was able to save his Primal Rage during that last fight. Pretty nice. Grab use now. Zephyr pops Blam. out. The Struct doesn't even need the damage. As soon as Cloudy already dropped there. Florida Mayhem putting together a really strong defense here on B. Yeah, they did have to use three ultimates to do that, but Paris Eternal, and they're going to have a couple tank ults. Gonna... <laughs> oh. Wow, he got him right, <laughs> right. as he tried to demech, or yeah. remech, rather. Right as the remech was coming through. Paris might have to use some of these support ults to even reach the payload right now. See, I feel like if you kill D.Va during her remeching animation, you should get to jump in the mech and pilot it yourself. <laughs> Is that how it should work? That's right. Although with Winston, he's a bit too big. He kind of has to use it like a, a ventriloquist dummy or something. Just <laughs> puts his hand on the back and moves it around. You know? Either way. Final fight here for the Paris Eternal. They've got to take it on this push. Yeah, barely any time remaining. It's now or never for Paris. They may have won the match, but again, we talked about how important that map differential is. And with Cloudy down, that's a problem. Finzi got the nano boost. 
Self-destruct available too. And this is a problem. Paris Eternal. All right, grab. Maybe they can do it with this set of ultimates. No follow-up though. Now the grab comes in for Florida Mayhem. Cloudy swapping over on the Hammond just to get back to the point again. Transcendence expires for Paris as they're pushed back. And there it goes soon. Agupan trying to fight that Zenyatta 1v1 in the middle of everything else, but can't quite get the kill. Meanwhile, Gray comes back. Agupan down. And Paris Eternal actually getting a few kills here. Shadowburn takes out BQB. Swan's Primal Rage might be the difference in the end. It very well might be. The oh, Wrecking Ball again. is here now. Remember, the spawns are closer for the Mayhem. They are really, really close. Paris Eternal. Ah, there goes Shadowburn. And so it looks like in the end, Florida will be able to maybe hold Finzi. Popped out of the mech. Hammond back again. Cloudy returns to the fray with the Wrecking Ball one more time, but that is where the payload will stop. And even if this series is lost, looks like Florida having a good time on that one. I mean, Florida, they, they gave up point A almost immediately, and then they held for so long on point B. So we said the Mayhem are looking better map by map. Now they have an opportunity here to really win this one. It's not a big ask to push through to the end of point B for this team. That was an impressive hold for Florida Mayhem. And if they can come away with, from uh, this series with at least one map, taken that'll be a that'll be a nice consolation prize and something that might come in handy later in the series too, or later in the season rather that's right so they will be switching over to the attack right now for the mayhem chris deep in thought in the main support role is like who can i knock off a cliff now <laughs> well not too many cliffs not on this ball no. off up here on gibraltar we're not going to get to point c either if Florida Mayhem pushes a payload right there, that's where the map ends. And they will get at least a map win. Paris Eternal, though, still going for that 4-0. Just to call back to what we talked about earlier, we did see that they were negative 8 in map differential overall in the season standings. So being able to get a 4-0 in the series would make up a lot of ground. Yeah, it, it, it is pretty significant for Paris. That is, that is a massive negative differential for them that is going to make it very hard if they tie with somebody on match score to stay ahead of them in the standings because that's the first tiebreaker is the map differential. Yep. Oh, might have a bit of a trick play here, Zephyr. Looking for a chance to hook. Oh, they nearly got it. That was a clutch shield on this soon to prevent that hook from connecting. Yeah, a lot of teams do this out of the Gibraltar spawn doors, yep. and it looks like, in fact, they are going to be doing something a bit interesting. Swan still on the Orisa, and they're just going to pirate ship it. All right, why not? Got the Orisa shields for the sails, got the cannon, the BQB, nice immortality field. Keep him alive here, and he's getting a lot of damage in. Ooh, that's a double kill for BQB already. I love this call. <laughs> This is very good oh, why not? up no. against the Winston 3-3 because it, when you go to the, the, I mean, the Winston just dies so fast if you try and contest the payload. Um, and the bubble is very hard to use in this circumstance to cut off the damage from, to place it properly, to cut off the damage from the Bastion while still being able to affect the members who are on the payload. So Paris Eternal right now, they're going to stick with it, however. That's the plan. Mortality field, and there's the uh, amplification matrix, the extra damage from Agopin's ultimate, helping BQB get even more kills here. Mayhem tries to finish off point A. Paris Eternal starting to use some ultimates to try to make it work. BQB goes configuration tank, doing a lot more damage for the moment here. Can't get any kills, but does try to push a few members of Paris back soon down, though. And that means Cloudy can't use that primal rage the way he wanted to. Has to use it to pretty much escape here. Uh oh, Finzi. Getting that defense matrix used up, demeched. And BQB can just leisurely stroll his way up to the high ground to cover that payload as it pushes forward to the end of A. I mean, this is fantastic for the Florida Bayhem. They're going to yeah. get a lot of time, nearly five minutes to push through point B because of how fast they were able to take point A. Now, that was true of the Paris Eternal also on their attack. But Florida Mayhem are snowballing very hard right now. They're going to start taking the high ground with the Bastion. And there's the supercharge that's going to help the damage of all of the Florida Mayhem members. Florida Mayhem 
and see how aggressive they want to be. They can just kind of stop the payload by being near it here. They don't really need to engage Florida right now. Yeah, that's a little awkward, though, because, yeah, they didn't have a line of sight onto the payload while Paris was stopping them, and Paris is going to hide under the platforms. Why not? Because Make him jump down. Yeah, I think this is a great play yeah. from Paris. Why not? You're running a Bastion comp, man. I mean, that Bastion has to come to you. You don't need to go there. Yeah, and you, you need somebody on the payload as well. And so if Zephyr dedicates himself to that, they're just going to use the sound barrier to try and push onto Zephyr. Well, they sent Zephyr over, yeah, to try to push the payload, and he got a little bit of distance on it. So they kind of figured out how to crack this one from Paris Eternal. Here we go. Time. That's right, not too many places for Gray Force to hide. Trance. Has to use it to stay alive, man. What can you do? Self to start coming in, gets blocked by the shield. Only the immortality field down. And there goes Hagobun. BQB does get the kill onto Gray, though. This payload starting to edge forward just a bit. Side player, can they keep him alive? Vinzi focusing on trying to take the Bastion off. Back to the payload, that one stopped again. Cloudy with the Primal Rage now. Paris Eternal just trying to keep Florida Mayhem from uh, getting situated on the point again. Yeah, they have to have that D.Va up and in the mech in order to put pressure onto the payload to move it. Yeah. BQB, another configuration tank. He's got these extremely fast. Gets stunned, though, immediately. He has to use a lot of this time to heal. And he kills out of this one. No, not quite. A lot of those eaten up by the by Finzi's defense, mates, defense matrix, rather. Cloudy does get the finishing blow into Cloudy in the end, though, and that wins it down is a big problem for Paris. Yeah, and they can keep inching forward here. There is a Paris player deep behind enemy lines. It's a Moira. Interesting. From Gray that was can't, needs to get back oh, to the team. Fade you. Battle burn. It's so tough, man. The healing just didn't reach in time. Finzi soon stopped the payload again, but BQB gets another kill onto Cloudy. So I have player takes out Gray and Florida Mayhem just looks really unstoppable on this map, honestly. This has easily been their best map, and it's going to be a map they win. Astro? So it will not be a 4 0 for Paris. Florida gets the win in the end. Still a 3 1 victory for Paris, but uh, a little bit of a positive outcome for Florida as well. I mean, I like the call from Florida. Why not use that? Because this entire series, Paris has struggled to break the Bastion on some of these defenses, so why not just take it on the offense instead? You know it was working for you pretty well on the other maps. That's what they do, and they pick up their first map win of the series. So that's something at least. Harris Eternal, though, still looking good in this series, showing us they have uh, a lot of uh, unique uh, DPS looks to show us here, which is I think is great. You know, people talk so much about the 3-3 from then last stage, but coming into stage two and showing us something totally different right off the bat. Yeah, and using a lot of players that we hadn't seen at all in stage one either. So yeah. that has been a major change to the Paris Eternal, and it's been a welcome one. That's right. And now we have Mika standing by with Gray for a post-match interview. Thanks, guys. We got Gray down here. Congratulations on your win, by the way. And the desk mentioned it earlier, and obviously we saw it during game, but your chemistry with Cruz has been phenomenal so far. So can you give us a little insight onto how that bonding has gone? It's kind of funny, because I feel like in the beginning we were not on the same page at all. But uh, it ended up working, because the fact that we were so off made us work really hard on it. So uh, it's really good right now. Like, on Hanamura, there was a fight where we just went alone on our mission and killed like three people. Like, it's pretty cool. I think I think we work really well together in very different aspects. Absolutely, congratulations on that. And also, you know, this stage has been kind of back and forth, a little uh, dipping in consistency. But would you say that this day, this match has been the the resurgence of Paris Eternal? Now we're just going to see you dominate from now on. I think so. I'm uh, I'm honestly very very confident. I know we're not the best in the standings right now, but. We have a lot to prove, and uh, I think we have the tools to do it. I'm really confident going forward, really confident. Well, I love to hear that you're confident, and I expect to see some amazing things from you now that you said that here live on broadcast. So that's all we have down here. Give it up for Gray one more time, everybody. Back up to you guys in the Caster's Nest. Thank you, Mika. We've already seen some amazing things from Gray here on the stage. He had a phenomenal day on the Ana, and a lot of positive uh, stuff coming out of Paris Eternal. Yeah, that's right. So another win for them, and we I think we have a player of the match. Hey, as if we haven't talked about Gray enough, our Omen by HP player of the match is Gray, of course. It's a great day for the Overwatch League, but that's it's a good thing here. A great day in a good way. And this 
and a grenade again, of sick course. Sick play, really sick play. Amazing placement with that. No way you, you can avoid it. There's no D.Va on the other side. And after that, anti-heal lands. They just jump in, take the point. And again, check it out, sleep dart. So smooth. I mean, he shut down so many nano boosts as well with the sleep dart. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, talked about some of his honest stats coming in today. Today, small sample size, but I bet he's still looking great in all of those categories. I mean, he hit Swan a ton of times with sleep darts as well, man. 16 enemies slept during the match. A lot of those really important sleeps, too. It's, it's one thing to just hit somebody with a sleep dart. It's another thing to hit a crucial person at a crucial moment yep. with a sleep dart and win your team a point. Yeah, absolutely fantastic play. Uh, a little bit surprising. I think we didn't see Gray at all in stage one, but he is certainly shining now that he is being given this opportunity to play for the Eternal. Yep, that's right. So our first series of the day down. Thanks to our Disney XD audience for watching here. There's still more Overwatch League coming, so don't go anywhere if you're on those other platforms. we got a great match coming up as well. It's going to be NYXL versus Washington Justice. We'll be coming back with that one right after this. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile, now connecting 99% of Overwatch League fans. Catch your league on America's network, T-Mobile.